Now it can be told, Howard Schnellenberger was not born with a pipe in his mouth. But he was born a winner, and throughout his career he made people around him winners. From 1979 through 1983, he changed the way people looked at University of Miami football, and the way the Hurricanes looked at themselves. Offensive line coach Art Kehoe played and coached under Schnellenberger. When he took over the program, I, don't, I think a lot of people talked commitment but weren't willing to walk commitment. And that work ethic, you know, that commitment, that uh, fierce dedication and discipline, uh, it helped us, you know, turn the program around. His coaching career began at Kentucky and then at Alabama under the legendary Bear Bryant. Then after serving on the Los Angeles Rams coaching staff, he found a new opportunity. Howard, you came from a winner of the Los Angeles Rams, a contender, to a loser, a tail end of the Miami Dolphins. I know the fans want to ask why. Well, it's really not so surprising. Schnellenberger you... coached the Dolphins offense for seven seasons, including the undefeated 17-0 year of 1972. Then in 1979, he accepted the challenge of rebuilding the Hurricanes. His defensive line coach, Harold Allen. He brought a lot of leadership uh, maybe from the Dolphins with, with Don Shula, and everything was, he brought it to college, it was also business. Former Canes offensive lineman, Don Bailey. He got out of people what no one else could get out of you. Howard took it as far as you could go, then a couple more steps, and then he would back off on it. There was a mystique, Howard Schnellenberger has a mystique about him, but that's what makes him great. That mystique began with Miami's shocking upset of Penn State in 1979 behind freshman quarterback Jim Kelly. To be a great football coach, you have to be a great teacher. Coach Snellenberger is most certainly both. And what I've learned from him is knowledge I use not only in my career, but in my everyday life. There are few people I respect as much as you, Coach. Soon, the wins began to accumulate. In 1980, a game-ending field goal and a 31-7 win over Florida. In 1981, 17-14 over top-ranked Penn State. And a 9-2 season was capped with a win over Notre Dame. But two seasons later, there was uncertainty as the Hurricanes opened 83 with a freshman quarterback and a 28-3 loss at Florida. We started off the year and, and got ambushed up at Florida. It was, you know, it, it scared everybody because you wondered what was going to happen after that. But, you know, we just we just kept getting better and better every week. Bozar on a play action deep down the middle to Brown. He's there. Brown's on the way. This will be a touchdown. 73 yards. Eddie Brown. There it goes off tackle to the right. And Bentley gets in the end zone for Miami. They picked it up well. Brown, touchdown. The wins kept coming. And in the season's ninth game, the Hurricanes beat West Virginia to stake their claim for a major bowl game. I can't say very much except this. You come a long way. Nobody in the world thought you could come this far. Nobody in the wildest dream thought you could do it. Except everybody here. You know, there's an old saying when you get in the top of the ninth inning, two outs. And you got your best pitcher up there, and he drives that first one by him. Strike one, and that's today. Yeah. Tomorrow, next next Saturday, strike two. Yeah. And then up in Tallahassee, strike three, and you're in. Yeah. But next week, Miami found itself trailing East Carolina in the fourth quarter. 50 short dog Z takeoff. Can you get that in there? Kozar on the drop. Bernie looking, firing long. Bomb, bomb, there, got it! And out of bounds! What do you call? I don't know. A jam in the middle. Kozar himself, the touchdown, Miami! Bernie Kozar! Yeah, 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 yeah. The next week, on the final play of the season's final game, Jeff Davis's field goal put the Hurricanes in the Orange Bowl against top-ranked Nebraska. I mean, we had great respect and admiration for Nebraska, but we felt very confident if we had just gone about our business and worked hard and, and stayed to tight and together as a team that we were going to play the type of game that would, you know, give us an opportunity to win. Second and short, like a free play down the middle. Dennison, he scores! Bernie takes, gives, Bentley 5, 3, 2, touchdown by you're right down to the guts of it right here, friends. 31 to 30, going for two. 
Gill takes, looks, rolls, throws. Deflected away! Deflected away! These guys did it because they knew they could. I'll tell you right now, school's out. This place is up for grabs. I think you can see out there in that stadium tonight what it really meant to this community and how totally involved and totally committed they were to this game tonight. This has been a love affair that's been developing for five years. And tonight was the uh, fulfillment of a dream that, uh, I say fulfillment, it might just be the beginning of a dream. Tonight, entering the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame, Howard Schnellenberger. <laughs>